What's going on fellas? In this video we're going to do a teardown of this burner that we saw a couple of weeks ago and we're going to do a little analysis of what's going on inside of this thing because some pretty interesting stuff has taken place right in front of me that I never realized before. It's going to help me design some far better combustion chambers and cyclone separators and stuff like that in the future or even cyclone combustion systems. All right, so here is the burner. We're gonna do a little tear down of this thing. This thing has not ran for very long at all. Maybe had about five gallons put through it at most. So one of the reasons I'm taking it apart is kind of a durability examination. To see whether or not something like this would even last. I don't think it will. Look at that. That's just from a small amount of operation. So we definitely don't want the nozzle inside of there, obviously. We would have to, uh, only problem with that, the first time I built this thing, I did have the nozzle set up at the back, but we were getting diesel fuel squirting out all over the place. So, I decided to just put it to the inside. But yeah, that thing is completely covered. And soot. Whole lot of buildup inside of here too. So, my opinion regarding these types of burners is they're just um, inferior to the air combustion or to the compressed air systems. Because of these nozzles, these types of burners work okay for one particular setting and then that's it. Like let's say we wanted to design a 60,000 watt burner, we would make a nozzle that atomized at a flow rate that was congruent with 60,000 watts. So, in order to adjust the flow rate on the fly, you would have to literally adjust this. Because if you change the flow rate, guess what? You have to change the position this is at. Okay, so I was able to pull some tricks out of my hat and get this particular combustion chamber to work at different settings despite some of the attributes of these systems that I've discussed here, but the combustion is less than favorable, so I don't know about it. You got this nozzle here. Um, if I give it a good hit, it's atomizing, but if we reduce the flow rate, we're, we haven't done anything to the nozzle. All we did was adjust the flow rate. Look at that. Worth. So yeah, so that's one of the problems with these atomizer type burners is that uh, the fuel atomization cannot be adjusted on the fly unless you adjust this particular constituent, which can be kind of hard to do. You gotta adjust the flow rate and this. So the fuel would require two adjustments alone. And there's the air. Now, Again, when it goes to throttling these things, um, you can build them very easily for a particular setting and then that's it. The only way you can control temperature with something like this effectively is an on-off system. Now, I tried to, de to defy those physics, but we come up with a flame that looks like this. It's just not burning all the fuel and the buildup inside of this thing is going to be extraordinary. You'll have to clean it out with a shovel by the time it's over. The burner turns on until you reach the temperature you want, then it turns off. That's it. There's really no turning the flame on this thing up and down, in my opinion. Um, based on the amount of buildup that I'm seeing in such a small amount of time, I'm certainly not a fan of this design. And you know, I've taken, I've seen videos of a bunch of those diesel heaters taken apart, and uh, they get very, very filthy. All right, for the purpose of contrast, let's examine an air compressor powered burner. As you can tell, the throttle adjustment is the, across the total spectrum. We can turn this thing down to extremely low um, operating rates, and we're still able to burn 
all the fuel. We're not spraying fuel over the place. This is waste oil, I believe, in this particular clip. I would imagine it is based on the color of the flame. Yep, look at that black hose back there. So we're not even splattering waste oil all over the, flo the floor here. Let's take a look with, at diesel. Okay, so here we see a tiny little air compressor burner outperforming that blower burner big time. I mean, we're blowing that thing out of the water. This is uh, going to be completely self-cleaning. There will be absolutely no buildup in a combustion chamber like this. And and we're only using about a thousand watts of power to run the compressor to get it to do this. Nowhere near as much as the blower setup that we see. The systems I build are self-cleaning. And you can adjust the flame. So, I don't think I'm going to be building any more of these based on this finding. Um, with waste oil, it is a little bit different. With waste oil, you don't need an atomizer nozzle. And we are going to try this burner out on waste oil. All right, guys, one of the cool things that I learned in these experiments was that a vortex is actually a vacuum channel. I never knew this before. It never dawned on me. But if you think about it, think about how when water is spinning down a drain and it creates this hollow channel. Um, essentially, when I put my hand up to the front of the burner the first time, I noticed that there was a region that would actually suck my hand up against the burner and air would fly out the edges. All right, Mescal, I need the Victor Schuberger and you to come out and help me explain what the heck we're seeing here. You see that channel? I know it's white hot, but that's because fire is being sucked back into it. I'm telling you guys, we've got air flying from the front of this burner all the way to the back down that channel. And it uh, is pretty amazing. I know this because when it wasn't lit, I put my hand up against the burner and you can feel that region sucking your hand into the combustion chamber. Pretty phenomenal. In the flame, we're seeing a figure that looks like this right out the end of the nozzle here. It's not quite a poof shape. I kind of messed that up. It's actually a cone. It looks the same way that a tank of water with a bottom drain on it would look after you pulled the plug out of it. And essentially, all this area inside of here is burning hotter than everywhere else. That's why it's shining a little brighter, I think. I could be wrong. Maybe it's oxygen deprived. And that's why it's not burning blue. Because we also have a, an area of blue combustion taking place right on the edge of it. And there's a black zone. Right up in here. There's a black zone that appears to not much of anything is going on. And then right up against the walls, we have a blue zone. I should be using colors for this, but I got one hand and can't find it. What do you do? So that's essentially what we're seeing. That yellow white hot column that we see is this right here. And it is indefinitely, I know this for a fact, is pulling fire from the front all the way to the back, at which point it's probably being diffused as it travels just from molecular capture of impact. Absolutely evident that fire from the front of the flame head is being sucked into this vortex and carried all the way to the rear of the combustion chamber and it makes complete total sense that it would do that and i'm going to show you why think about it if you've got a spinning channel of air right like let's do a circle here okay and you've got the air just hauling at 60,000 RPMs here. Any air, stray air molecule that flies into that region is going to get swept away and carried out of this zone. So if you've got a bunch of air molecules and they're doing their little thing, you know, they like to bounce around like this all over the place off of each other. Eventually, they get sucked into this area and just swept away. The same way a Ventura nozzle works and 
you get the Ventura effect here because the same thing, any molecule in this area is swept away by the velocity of these molecules and cannot be recovered. So it induces a vacuum. Now, I wish I would have known this years ago when I designed a lot of the pot belly burners that I've built because there's a conflict there. So this is a very interesting observation. A combustion chamber that runs well on waste oil will do phenomenal on diesel fuel, but it's not always the other way around. You may have a combustion chamber that does well on waste oil, but it ain't worth a darn on diesel. I have discovered that phenomenon. Time and time again, I've come across that. Just wanted to show that to you guys. Uh, we'll be seeing this thing again in the future here for the oil burner book that I'm writing. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm not impressed at all with the blower burners. Even the power consumption of the blower was higher than the air compressor for um, even a meager little flame. It wasn't really, it was kind of cool. But I'm gonna show you one more thing. So I don't know how well this is gonna come up. This camera doesn't do too well. But I wanted to put a link in the description for you guys to take a look at. This is my eBay store. And it pretty much contains all the stuff that I sell. And I wanted you guys to do me a favor. Go over there and check it out and just beat the hell out of me. Tell me everything you hate about me, man, so I can fix it. And help me out with the 102 followers issue. It just looks petty. So if you're bored and you've got an eBay account, head on over to Forge Burner and hook it up. See if we can pump the followers up on this thing. Um, I've only got 137 reviews, but uh, I'm working on it. Not everyone who makes a purchase does a review, but just wanted to show you guys what I've been doing on the back burner here. This is some of the stuff that has been uh, keeping me alive these days. So check it out. Tell me what you think. I've got a lot of stuff to put on here yet that I haven't had time to do. So this is where we are, I'm a one man band. Just thought I'd show you that.